It's Andy from Niopsis Corporation. In this class, we're going to talk about finished goods or our product or sales catalog. I'm going to go into the function menu, enter the inventory module, and I'm going to look at all inventory. Now, there is a specific option to look at just the product catalog, but for this training class, let's use the all inventory option. We have all of our raw materials, and we can see that we have different varieties and maybe different serial numbers and raw materials, and those same options available in our sub-assemblies. Here we see all of our serialized inventory on the right, but you'll notice that there's absolutely nothing in the way of finished goods in our product catalog. How we configure and how we enter our finished goods depends on the nature of our inventory. If you are in a company where you store lots of inventory that is not yours, you're going to enter all of your inventory as a finished good, and you probably won't have any raw materials or any subassemblies. If, however, you do purchase raw materials or you purchase raw materials, transform them and combine them into subassemblies, and then put a price on that subassembly and call it a product, well then you're gonna have the system build your finished good inventory for you. If you only store product, let's say that you're a shipping yard and you have a huge flat lot filled with storage containers. You don't own the containers and you don't own anything in the containers. You have to keep track of where the containers are, and you provide the service of loading and unloading those containers on and off of transport ships. That's a situation where you have a huge inventory and don't own any of it. You would only have finished goods. Maybe you store other people's tools or vehicles, or you store their raw materials. It doesn't matter whether it's a raw material or a subassembly. If you store it but don't own it, don't buy it and don't sell it, then you're only going to have finished goods. And the way you enter them is by clicking on the plus sign and adding a new product. Click on new product. It will bring up the new product screen and you can enter all of that information. The SKU, optionally a product group, the description, and all of the ways that you group that item by type, by category, by classification. You can track units of measure and units per units of measure. So maybe the unit of measure is the case and there are 12 individual pieces per case. You can indicate multiple price levels. You have your cost and a markup and then that will give you your MSRP. You then have up to four different options for additional pricing. The system will automatically track all transactions and specifically all sales of your inventory. And you can set up the default inventory account, revenue account, and cost of goods sold account. So as you transact business in inventory, it'll be properly reflected in accounting for on your financial statements. Whether or not the system builds your inventory or you enter it yourself, all of your inventory will be tracked automatically on this screen. You can even have a picture of your inventory right here. When you have inventory, whether it's yours or whether you're storing it on behalf of someone else, you very often will need to move or transport that inventory. Now, when I want to track the movement of inventory, I can do that using the logistics option here in my inventory screen. I go to the logistics icon, click to bring up my logistics options, and there are three. The first option is transport. This is where we keep track of a change in custody of the item. Doesn't matter who owns it, if it's your inventory or if you are receiving or shipping inventory that's owned by someone else. The transport option allows us to track inbound and outbound inventory. A transfer is when we are going to retain custody 
but move it from one location to a different location. Maybe we have a huge inventory of automobiles. We have multiple car lots and we want to relocate 10 automobiles from this lot and transfer them to a different lot. We still own them and we still have custody of them. We're simply transferring them from one location, one address, to a different address. And finally, we have the move option. This allows us to move inventory within a particular location. Let us say that we operate that storage yard, that shipping dock, and we have hundreds and thousands of shipping containers filled with millions of pieces of inventory and product. We don't own any of it, but we store it, we protect it, and periodically we move it around the yard. If we have a piece of inventory that just came into our loading dock, it transported inbound, and it may sit on the dock for a week or two until we can complete inspections and the various processes we go through to inbound new inventory. Eventually, we're going to want to move it from the loading dock of the current location to the specific rack or aisle or building at that same location where it's going to reside. So we can transport inbound or outbound, transfer between locations, or move inventory within a specific location. All of that is affected and accessed here through our logistics module. Let us say we have a particular piece of inventory that is uniquely identified with a specific and one-of-a-kind serial number. Let's say that inventory has come back to us for warranty service, or we're sending a technician out to a buyer's location where we're going to do some work on a piece of equipment or machinery that's uniquely serialized and that has been sold. I can bring up that piece of inventory here on my product profile, click the maintenance button, and this will allow me to create a work order or a service ticket for this particular and uniquely identified and serialized piece of inventory. The system will automatically keep track of all service and maintenance, all of the costs, labor, and pieces and parts that are expensed in the process of servicing and maintaining serialized stock are automatically tracked and calculated by the system and are available for each individual item. And we will see those service history transactions here in the transaction ledger detail. Now let's go back and talk about how we create these items in the first place. Remember, if you don't own it, you're simply going to create a new product. But if you do own it, which means you brought in the raw materials or you created the subassemblies, you're going to price it and sell it to someone else. In that situation, we want the Ninox ERP system to build our product catalog for us. And the product catalog that gets built will depend on the configuration of our raw materials and subassemblies. Let's take a look. Here we have a particular piece of inventory, a men's dress shirt. And we will see here that the men's dress shirt is to be included in the sales catalog. However, we also have this men's silk tie, a blue and gold club tie. This particular item is not available for sale by itself. It is not included in the sales catalog. The only way you can get the tie is if you buy the men's ensemble, which is a subassembly. And that subassembly consists of a shirt, a pair of trousers, a blazer, and that gold and blue club tie. And this men's ensemble, this subassembly, is included in our sales catalog. When we want the system to build our inventory, it is going to only build those things that have been tagged to be included in the inventory. Here we have a subassembly called the passenger automobile, which consists of other subassemblies, notably the drivetrain subassembly, which consists of 
these individual raw materials. We will note that the passenger automobile is included in the sales catalog. However, the drivetrain, which we can see is a serialized piece of inventory, is not included in the sales catalog. We stock them in inventory, but we don't sell them to the general public. After you have gone through and tagged all of the items and raw material, and all of the sub-assemblies, and all of the varieties of the items, and all of the serialized piece of inventory, once you have tagged them as yes or no, are they to be included in the sales catalog, you now are ready to have the system build your catalog. To do that, we'll click Add New, select Product, and instead of adding a new product manually, we'll update the catalog. This is something you can do anytime. Updating the catalog does not make any changes to existing pieces of inventory. It only updates new pieces of inventory and possibly the prices if we've had a price change of existing or older inventory. I'll click Update Catalog. I will confirm. And here we see all of our inventory. We see each individual variety and serialized automobile. We see that we sell tires, which is a raw material. We sell that raw material if someone wants to buy an extra tire. The men's blazer can be sold in a variety, brass buttons or silver buttons, but there's no option to buy that silk tie. Remember, that's only available if we buy the men's ensemble, and there's two varieties of the men's ensemble. One includes a blue shirt, one includes a white shirt. So when we have the system build our product catalog, it is capturing all the raw materials, all the variety of raw materials, and all the uniquely serialized raw materials, and all of our sub-assemblies, varieties of sub-assembly, and serialized pieces of sub-assemblies. And when the option is chosen to include that in the sales catalog, the SKU, the description, everything that we need to identify and sell the item will automatically be set up. Your MSRP will automatically be calculated based on the unit cost and the standard markup of the raw material or the subassembly that is the source of this entry in our finished goods sales catalog. You would then have the option to go through and define the additional price levels. You can do that manually or you could set a default. All transactions for this particular item will be tracked here and every sale line item that includes one of these items will be tracked here. When inventory is uniquely serialized, that also will be reflected here in our product catalog. Here is item 01000B1375. 01000 tells me it's an automobile. B tells me it's blue. 1375 are the last four digits of the unique serial number. And that unique serial number is noted right there. If I add new raw materials or create new sub-assemblies, if I change the price on existing items, I can always go back, click New, click Product, and update my catalog. New prices for old items will automatically be set, but previous invoices or purchase orders for those items will not change. New products will be created, and our catalog will always be up to date. This method of defining the different stages of inventory raw material, sub-assembly, finished goods. Gives us the flexibility to track our inventory as well as other people's inventory. It allows us to track uniquely serialized pieces of inventory and keep them in our inventory after they're sold for purposes of service and maintenance or warranty, 
while other items, once they're sold, may no longer be available in our product catalog. If we replenish our stock by cutting purchase orders and receiving new stock, or we take our raw materials and build additional subassemblies, using the product update catalog option will allow those price and quantity changes to be automatically reflected here in our sales catalog. That's how we keep track of the finished goods that we keep track of in inventory. That's all there is to it. I'll see you in the next training class.